More on the cruise industry and how the Trump administration's new restrictions will affect it, I'm joined from Chicago by Stephen Scott, founder and CEO of Travel Hub 365. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So start by, start by breaking down for us the Trump administration's recent decision on banning U.S. Cruise, cruises to Cuba. Why now and who is this really going to hurt? Yes, uh, the June 5th uh, restriction came down pretty quickly. It affected the cruise industry and all of the travelers that were going to be taking their trip to Cuba. Uh, the biggest concern uh, that occurred last week was that it happened so abruptly. Uh, so there were actually cruise ships that were halfway to Cuba that were turned around and sent to other ports. And in addition, we had cruise uh, ships that were canceled for the next number of weeks, months, and year as well. So given the short notice, how have cruise companies responded so far, and, and what sort of recourse do they have? Yes, it was uh, with the abrupt change, the cruise lines had to act swiftly um, because there was a 24-hour period where a lot of consumers and travelers did not know whether their trip was going to go. Uh, so you had the cruise lines scrambling to work very hard to adjust itineraries, cancel where necessary, or they also had to figure out what compensation they were going to provide the consumers and the travel community to uh, help out with this change. So by specifically targeting the cruise industry, who really loses out the most from this decision? We know we're supposed to be targeting the Cuban government, but you also have a lot of people on the island who depend on this industry. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, we heard so many good stories over the last uh, two years from the travelers that have gone to Cuba and come back. Uh, so it's definitely concerning to hear uh, what is going to happen, of course, to those people locally there in Havana. Uh, additionally, from a, a cruise line perspective, the cost layout for what they were expecting to do over the next number of years as a business is affected. Now, I will say uh, Cuba and uh, the Caribbean itineraries affected are only a small portion of the total industry. Um, it was really helping the new to cruise client for the cruisers. And, and that is uh, a big piece of why Cuba was so fascinating. It was bringing people in that had never cruised before. So then how do you see this impacting profits for the second half of 2019 overall? How, how big of the impact is this going to be? You know, the, the impact can be split in a few different ways. You have uh, the uh, local tour guides, uh, the local families and restaurants that were working very hard to handle those consumers that were coming in from America, Europe, and, and China as well. Um, but you also have an effect from the immediacy of what happened. Those itineraries uh, and planning for getting to Cuba and all of the different ports in the Caribbean, that, hand, that is handled years in advance. Um, and so to make a quick change like that, and then also to have consumers cancel like that is a big impact. But I will say the cruise industry and the travel community is very resilient. Uh, we're used to changing those itineraries around. Um, and the industry as a whole from the last 15 years has been really focused on defining the cruise ship as the destination. So you've got new cruise lines coming out that are focused on luxury, uh, some that are focused on adult travel uh, only. And you've got a lot of resiliency within the market. So uh, it will be a quick impact, but I do see that cruising will continue to grow at the pace it is. And as we look at the market, according to Cruise Lines International Association, the world's largest cruise industry trade organization, Generation Z is set to become the largest consumer generation in the next two years, outpacing millennials. People want these Instagrammable vacations, they want experiences, and they want to relax, but they don't want a run-of-the-mill holiday. How is the cruise industry keeping pace with the needs of today's traveler? Yes, it is all about the ship. So uh, the cruise industry is focused on that uh, Gen X traveler that now has Gen Z uh, cruisers coming with them. I'm one of them. Uh, I'm bringing my kids on a cruise soon. Um, and it's really important that they, uh, uh, as a whole, try to figure out what is going to entertain the traveler and from a multi-generational standpoint. And so the new cruise ships that are being built right now are attractive to a lot of those different uh, uh, families and younger travelers that just want to get away, have a great time, but also let everyone know back home, I'm on this amazing trip. And just quickly, we have about 20 seconds. As you look at growing markets, what is the industry's expansion plan for China? What's the strategy there? 
Yes, uh, you know, there's been a start and stop motion with the Chinese market from a cruise standpoint, but the biggest lines are actually launching their biggest and best ships right now. Just in the last few days, the Spectrum of the Seas by Royal Caribbean was launched there in Shanghai. So with new itineraries and fantastic ports like Shanghai available, we're going to have a great market for China going forward. All right, thank you so much. Stephen Scott there, founder and CEO of Travel Hub 365.